I believe one of the great ways to mix things up is what you listen to and who you surround yourself with. The people you hang with, the videos you watch, the media you consume, all of it are perfectly designed to keep you exactly where you are right now today. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know that inside you, there's something more as well. You are a genius. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message from Gary Vaynerchuk. Also, if you want to have more confidence, check out my 254 series. It's free. The link to join is in the description below. We are strong as We're really strong. We're just being sold that we're not because there's a lot of money. The reason people aren't patient is they value other people's opinions too much. In a success world, please understand that success is happiness, not net dollars in. I believe one of the great ways to mix things up is what you listen to and who you surround yourself with. Um, I would, I'm unbelievably passionate about people finding more optimistic, practical friends. And I, and I think optimism gets, can, get, can slide into delusion, which is why I say optimistical, practical. There's only offense and defense. There's only the force and the dark side, right? And I think that um, right now people are, are, a lot of people are choosing to be driven by fear and negativity without realizing it. And so if you're listening right now, my biggest thing is start leaning into a little bit more of optimism and positivity. Your environment has been perfectly designed to keep you exactly where you are. The people you hang with, the videos you watch, the media you consume, all of it are perfectly designed to keep you exactly where you are right now today. If you want to raise your standards, it starts by raising your environment first. So a friend of mine and friend of the channel, Mark Drager from Fanta, gave me a really warm message yesterday and he thanked me for helping start the process for him to turn from being a pessimist to an optimist, from being somebody who was always worried and negative to somebody who's having more energy, who's seeing the light, who's becoming more optimistic, who still has a road to go, but is so far further along than where he was before. And he wrote to me to say, thank you for starting me down this path. He said there was one conversation in particular that had special meaning to him where I told him that I, I just really believed in him, that I saw a lot of the people around him, I saw a lot of his peers, and I just thought that he had so much more potential than where he was. And I think maybe for the first time he had an extra bolt of belief pushed into him, which is what I do, which is what I'm great at, which is what I enjoy doing. But fast forward to now, six months, eight months later, He's made major gains in his life. He's, he's brought on new team members. He's now consuming other content that is positive and optimistic. He's changing his business around. He's investing more in himself. He's happier. He's lost a lot of weight. He's, he's growing. He's wanting to strengthen his relationships. He's just seen a big shift in his life by trying to move more into optimism instead of pessimism. And so it started with my conversation with him. He then promoted somebody within his organization to become COO, whose name was Louie, and he's also a, a massive force for good and positivity. He started consuming Gary's content, which is positivity. He started consuming Tom Bilyeu's content, which is positivity. He started now injecting all these, these people and resources into his life to make him feel more positive, more optimistic, more happy, give him more energy so that he has that to go take on his goals and the challenges that are in front of him. And slowly move that needle from being a pessimist to an optimist. I don't think people are pessimists, to be honest. I think everybody is born an optimist. I don't think people are born negative. You know, I think that's trained into you. I think you're a pessimist and negative because of the circumstances you had and what was planted in your brain by the people around you. I think people are good. I think humans are just good. I think if we weren't good, we, we wouldn't be here anymore. 99.99999% of people are good. 
right? Some people have a little bit of a miswiring up there and it causes them to enjoy killing people. But for the most part, we're good. I also believe that people are built to serve. I believe that you get happiness from helping others by being of service to others. That's what actually makes you happy. There aren't very many happy moments in your life that didn't involve somebody else. You were helping, you were serving. They've shown the effect on your brain of serving and helping somebody is the same as food and sex. We're, we're literally hardwired to help others and to serve. And so if you believe like I believe that humans are good and humans are built to serve, then what would cause somebody to be pessimistic and negative? How sad of an upbringing does that person have to have had? the programming that was installed inside them by other people who just were negative and down on their life, but weren't inherently bad people. The people who stole from my car in LA, the guy who cut me off in traffic yesterday, I don't think they're bad people. I still think they're good people who are built to serve. Just circumstances and conditioning have led them down a negative path. And so the good news is you can get out of it, just like my friend Mark has, who was someone who, would, who was sworn to say, I'm a pessimist, right? I just default to negativity to now seeing the shift by changing the people he's surrounding himself with, by altering his environment, by consuming content that is more positive, he's already seen a noticeable shift over the past X number of months, and that's gonna continue to grow. That could be you too. There's a three-step process you to follow, and I'm gonna give it to you right now. Step number one is collect good people. You need to be in the good people collecting business. I had that conversation with Mark that had a lasting impact on him because I love Mark, because in him I see just such a good person, just so much potential. And I mean, I see that in everybody, a lot of potential, but mm, you know, I just wanna, I wanna collect good people. I want good people around me. I wanna have people around me in my life who are in my business or just associates or just people that I know that are good people, that give me energy, that, that lift me up, that I'm excited to be around, right? There are some people that when you're around, you just have more energy and vibrancy collect them, find ways to work with them, find ways to stay attached to them. I even make it awkward. There's, there's a lot of people who I'll meet if I meet somebody at a conference or at an event or, or something that's happening in my city or in another city. If I just really like their energy, I say, I really like you. <laughs> I really like you. I want to find a way to do more with you. That's awkward. That's hard to say. That's weird. That's strange. But chances are they're feeling the same thing about you that they don't have as many great people as they wish they had in their life as well. And so think about the people who give you energy that are just good people that you wish you could spend more time with them and tell them that, as awkward as that seems, and then find ways to stay around them more because you wanna have those positive people in your life. Set number two is 254s. I've created a program called 254s. There's a link in this video, it's in the description below, where every day for 254 days, I send you a video around a certain topic. In this case, it's around building unstoppable confidence. If you watch a video for 254 days, you will become more confident. It, it'll happen. Science tells us that it takes between 18 and 254 days of consecutive action to build a habit. If you're on a diet for one week, it's likely not to stick. It takes at least 18 days. The average is 66 days, so most people don't spend enough time doing the thing before they quit and give up. But the worst case scenario, the slowest human learner of all time, <laughs> takes up to 254 days of consecutive action to build a habit. And so I made the 254 program for you guys, that if you wanna have more confidence, or we have a series for women entrepreneurs, or a series for black excellence, and a series for writers, right? If, you, if you're a writer, every day for 254 days, you're gonna get a free video emailed to you of a writer who's had success. Now, if you're a stay-at-home writer, you're trying to get your first book off the ground, you may not have a lot of people around you supporting you, believing in you, telling you to go for it, but then here's this email every day with a new video from somebody who's made it, giving you an inspirational message that's 30 seconds to five minutes long, right? My goal ultimately is to have a thousand of these. I wanna have a thousand 254s because you may not care about the Writer's Wisdom program if you're not a writer. You may care about the confidence one. If you want, go to the description and find the link to get on. But if not, then make your own, like make your own. Even this channel spreads believe every day. If you want to have more believe in your life, watch these videos. That's the intent, it spreads belief. If you feel a little bit more belief in yourself that you are a genius, that you have Michael Jordan level talent at something, if this video helps spark that, then, then watch more. And if it's not me, then it's somebody else. Go watch Gary's content, go watch Tony's content, go watch Mel's content, whoever it is. Create your own 254 program where every day for 254 days at least, ultimately becomes a lifetime thing. You're surrounding yourself with, with resources 
that feeds the positivity in your mind, that hope that, that things are possible, that you don't need to stay where you are right now, that you can end up in a better place if you put in the work. But if you don't believe that it's possible, you won't chase it down. So you need to create your own 254 program. And then number three is have play bigger triggers. Play bigger triggers are things in your environment that remind you to step up. It could be a shirt that you wear, right? And, and that shirt that you put on reminds you to play a bigger game. It could be your physical environment, putting up posters or banners in your office, wherever you're working or in your car as a reminder that you need to step up. It could be your screen time, right? What's on your cell phone background? What's on your desktop background? that when you look at every day reminds you, it's triggers in your environment to step up and play a bigger game. Your environment is keeping you where you are, so you need to change your environment. This doesn't mean that you can afford necessarily to, to move out and go buy some penthouse in New York City that looks over Central Park, right? That may not happen, but you can have a poster of it as a reminder that, that you're building a better future, that this is not where you're gonna be. This place that you're in right now is not gonna be where you're gonna be in a year because you're making big growth, you're making big gains. And so you wanna set up triggers in your environment that remind you constantly. Why it's beautiful is you set it up once. You set up your cell phone background once, and what it does is reminds you every time you look at your phone. How many times are you looking at your phone? Would you like an inspirational message to remind you to play bigger, something emotional? It has to mean something to you. Don't copy what I have. These are my parents. It means something to me to have them on the wall. My parents on your wall won't mean very much probably, right? It's a little weird. So what are the things? What is your environment? What is your home office? What is, what's in your car? What's in your bedroom? What's on the cell phone and your computer background? What is it? What are the things that when you see just makes you think that's right and it snaps you out of mediocrity. It snaps you out of the way you are because you want to just stay where you are. Again, it's been perfectly designed to keep you where you are. It's easy to stay where you are and then bam, something shows up. So you can trick yourself. You can force yourself to play a bigger game if you set up the right play bigger triggers for yourself. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, question of the day, I wanna know what can you do today to inject more positivity into your life? Leave your answers in the comments below. And if you like this video and you're gonna take some immediate action after watching it, give me a hashtag believe in the comments as well. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. And so if you're focusing on the negative, guess what's gonna happen? Your energy is gonna to go to the negative and everything, and everything is gonna be negative because that's where your focus is. That's where your energy is flowing. Listen to me. If you think about that thing, you concentrate on winning. You concentrate on dominating. Listen to me. Whatever you focus on, your, where your focus goes, your energy flows. And so we, we, we gonna think about what we're thinking about. You hear me? We gonna think about what we're thinking about and when we think about those things which are pure, listen to me, come on. That stuff that's true, right? Are you, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, are you hearing me? Meditate on this stuff, focus on this stuff. It don't mean negative things won't happen, but we're not focusing on it. Are you hearing me? It don't mean that negative things won't, won't, won't transpire, that as you go through the day, something bad won't happen. But we're not going to meditate on it. We're going to focus on what's positive. We're going to focus on what's good, right? And when we focus on that, that's where our energy is going to go. And what's going to happen is the outcomes are going to reflect our thinking. As the band were riding high in 2010, five years earlier, an innocuous email conversation with a friend from the U.S., written during his training days was to bring his career to a screeching halt. The email, in which Jay wrote of being homesick while also detailing the culture shock that was leaving him unsettled and uncertain of his future in Korea, was somehow mysteriously leaked to the media. The consequences were devastating. JYP made a snap decision and told Jay to pack his bags. The lead singer of an outrageously popular boy band in Korea has fled that country and landed here in Western Washington. Though Jay was the leader of a band that has racked up gold records and millions of fans, after being sacked by the band's backers, Jay was left with nothing to show for his years of hard work and dedication. I didn't want to spend my parents' money. I've been in Korea for like three, four years, really didn't really have anything to show, except for, you know, a bunch of hate comments online. The wheels of fortune had stopped spinning for Jay. He was forced to take up a minimum wage job changing tires in a backstreet garage in Seattle just to make ends meet. 
I really think that made him stronger. He's got this optimistic character, you know what I mean? So I think he really learned a lot from that, I guess. One night after a 12-hour shift at the garage, Jay dared to dream again. He picked up a laptop given to him as a gift by some of his fans in Korea. Jay had an idea. Beautiful girls all over the world. I heard the song, Nothing On You on the radio. I was like, oh, I love this song. I should do a cover of this and put it up on my YouTube. Nothing on you, baby. Nothing on you, baby. And it went super viral, but it got two million views in one day. That video got Jay back on the map, back on the radar, and there was opportunities for him to come back. That laptop was his lifeline and proved to be a launch pad to a new solo career. This was the spark, which to everyone's surprise, reignited interest in Jay's talent. For the first time ever, no one's telling me, do this, do that, do this, do this. I'm completely on my own. Now I was kind of like reluctant to, to really like get just straight up get back into it. Soon, the Seattle exile was over. It was time to return and take on the Korean pop establishment, this time on his own terms. Evan, thank you so much for having a couple seconds and being able to tell the Believe Nation a little bit about Empathy Wines. It means a lot to me that you would take this valuable real estate and, and time on your channel to give me some love. It means a lot. It's just good karma points and so you're just, you're awesome, thank you. Believe Nation, uh, if you're into wine at all, go to empathywines.com. My whole career's work was poured into producing a wine that rivaled 40 to $60 wine for 20 bucks a bottle. Uh, I'm just super excited about this subscription-based wine business. You can order three, six, or 12 bottles in subscription form, rosé, white, red. Um, if, you, if you search on Instagram or, or Twitter, you will be blown away. People are literally like, I don't even like Gary Vee, but the wine's good. Super proud of the effort. Thanks, Evan, for the time. Uh, wishing you guys all happy and healthy. If you want Gary's advice on how to know if you are a true entrepreneur, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. If you're a purebred entrepreneur, you love the dark clouds.